His breath smells so bad. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. I am Jason Salyer and I am in the heart of Atlanta visiting some friends. I don't typically come down to the city because I just don't like cities very much. Um, I don't like all the traffic. I don't like all the noise. I don't like the dirtiness and the people for the most part, but <laughs> but every now and then I've got to come down here, so I, I tolerate it. Um, but it got me thinking, what if you lived in a city? I think most of the people that are watching this video, you that I'm talking to in particular, you probably live in a city or suburbs or more of a congested area than I do. You don't live in a rural area, most likely. And moving out of those areas is not necessarily always an option. You can't just up and leave because, you know, just because. Sometimes you have to be where you are. It just doesn't, you know, financially or whatever, you just can't go. Um, what are some things that we could possibly do to mitigate the suffering if things should get bad? And a really, really, it's not the city that's the problem. It's all of the people in the city that are, are the problems. Um, and what can we do if things should go south in those really, really congested areas? Because if there's going to be a problem, it's going to happen in that congested area first. What are some things that we can do to mitigate those problems? So immediately, the first thing that always comes to my mind is water. What are you going to do about water? There's no creeks around here. There's no flowing spring. So the first solution that comes to mind when we talk about water is going to be catching rainwater. It rains a lot here. Um, yeah, you might go some periods without it, but for the most part, you're going to get some rain on a fairly regular basis. Um, catching it off of our roof here and catching it off of and, and harnessing it from the gutter system would be an option. That's an asphalt roof, so that's not ideal. Um, it's going to get some particulates and stuff in it from the, from the shingles itself. But what we could do is easily modify it and get um, get some metal roofing material ahead of time, and that way you have a much cleaner surface to collect your rainwater off of. You could build a whole separate rain catchment system if you wanted to, bury the water underground in, in um, a big 500 gallon container or a thousand gallon, however much you wanted to catch. But you could easily set something up right here and be able to have, if you rationed it, you'd be able to have tons of water. Um, inside the house, you could have a Berkey water filter. And you could run that rainwater through that and then you could have plenty of drinking water. Are you going to have all you need for all of your uses? Like you're going to be taking showers and things like that, of course, but, but you're going to be able to not die of dehydration. Bruiser here is only mean when he's in his bed for some reason. Cranky. But he's waiting for you right now to hit the thumbs up. So let's say you are caught with your pants down, right? And the water just suddenly stops flowing and you haven't prepared. Things like this, you could catch water in pretty easily. You could cut your downspout, remove one of the sections of your downspout and put this underneath it and collect quite a bit of water. I don't know how many gallons this is, but I don't know, 50-ish, something like that. Um, and you could have several of these things around making that happen. I mean, literally just setting them out in the rain will collect rainwater as well. Won't be quite as efficient, but it could definitely work. If you propped a piece of metal roofing material, it's a real simple setup. This is like no problem at all. No setup time whatsoever. If you took this, took this, set a piece of roofing material that you can buy at any Home Depot or whatever, just a single piece, and put it at a slant up against the side of the building, propped it up really securely where the wind wouldn't blow it away, maybe secure it with a couple of screws, or any rain that hits that metal roofing material is gonna flow into your container, and then you've got yourself a makeshift rain catchment system that will, in a downpour, you'll fill this thing up really fast with something simple like that. So after we've addressed the water issue, food is going to be our next concern. Um, if supply chains should, you know, go awry, which we've seen from current events with the gas shortages and things like that, it's not really that difficult for, for a cyber attack to shut that system down and suddenly the grocery stores have nothing to offer you. Um, what are we going to do? having food storages, long-term food storages of your staples like rice and beans and things of that nature are going to be really, really important. Storage of those things is tough, especially if you live in a urban area and the houses are smaller and you just don't have room for that kind of thing. You can bury stuff outside in caches, which we've done a video on. Um, 
you, there's lots of different options and lots of ways to tackle those problems, but it needs to be addressed. You need to have the foresight. The you need to be thinking about this stuff now before the problems actually occur. Make sure that you guys have six months, a year's worth of food for your family, so you don't have to worry about the problems um, that everybody else will have. A lot of you live in apartment complexes, um, condos, and that sort of thing, and you're gonna be really limited on space, and you're gonna have to get extra creative on where to store things like that. Um, can you have separate storage units and things like that? Of course, but that's a pain in the butt, and if it's not with you, if you don't have it in your possession, it's not really yours. Um, so you can store things under your bed. I've seen people make make basically put their mattresses on top of five gallon buckets and if all their entire bed underneath it is completely um, food um, so lots of different creative ways to do things like that so I know you're gonna be limited on space you're not gonna have acres and acres to grow a huge garden but if you can grow some of your own food I think it's gonna be really beneficial if you can conceal this in some way that's a good idea too it's difficult to conceal this kind of stuff um, especially if you've got any size garden at all. But if you can grow some of your own foods to supplement the foodstuffs that you've put away, it's a no-brainer, it's a really, really good idea. Another thing to consider is winter time. This is Atlanta and it's not like the most miserable winter conditions ever, but it does get cold. And do you have more than one way to heat your home? Um, if you don't, that's something that can be considered as well. So. Um, firewood if you've got a fireplace in the home a lot of the older homes will have fireplaces a lot of the newer ones may not um, but if you have that pop, that as an option make sure you have enough firewood stocked up um, because getting firewood around here is going to be a difficult situation yeah there are trees but try felling one of these without crushing the house next door it's going to be <laughs> not very possible so um, and then you have the neighbors pissed off you a whole nother problem Now, if you don't have an alternate source of heating your home, make sure your home is as well insulated as possible. Um, make sure that you've got lots of warm winter clothing, durable warm winter clothing, blankets, sleeping bags, all of that stuff. Because in this area, you can live without having an external heat source. It's not like we live in the Arctic um, where, you know, sub-zero temperatures are the regular. You can survive if you get in a sleeping bag in the winter time. It's not that big a deal. Um, but just make sure you have those supplies ready. Shelter. What kind of condition is your home in? Is the structure in? It, does your roof leak? Do you have rotting siding? You know, is does that need to be addressed before we can no longer source the materials to fix those things? So while the getting's good, go ahead and take care of all those issues that you need that you've been putting off. Uh, what's your what are your gutters like are they full of crap and leaking and, and starting to rot the um, rot the side of your house um, do you need to put a new roof on I, I don't know there's all kinds of things that you can you can do now easily we can run down to the hardware store get all the stuff that we need we can hire someone to do the job and we can take care of it right now instead of procrastinating and putting it off to a point where those things are no longer available. It's no longer calling somebody up on the phone and saying, hey, I need the thing. Um, get it done now. Um, try some things out at your home. What's your home like with no air conditioning? How does it ventilate? Um, test that stuff out now in the heat of the summer like this. You know, can you get enough ventilation in the home and keep things from getting mildewy and nasty in there? Is that possible or do we need to do something else? To, um, to make it livable without air conditioning. Last on my list to really consider, I mean, there's so many things to consider, but you know, to keep this video a little bit more brief, um, last thing to consider is security. Like I said in the beginning of the video, people are the problem. It's not the city, it's the people in that city, the, the congested area, and there's gonna be competition for resources. And do you have a way to secure the things, the items that you've acquired? And that's a tricky one, man. That's that's going to be really tough. And nobody out there, despite what you're, you know, what they say, what they claim to be their ex the expert, no one out there can predict exactly what the situation is going to look like when it arises. Um, what we can count on is one, people doing selfish things for looking out for their themselves and their own. So we can definitely count on that happening. 
as unfortunate as that sounds and as sad as that sounds, we can count on people being selfish. Um, so we need to have um, the hammers and the nails to be able to protect ourselves uh, when the time comes. And hammers and nails, I think you know what I'm talking about. Make yourself a less desirable target. You can have security cameras up. You can have gates in front of your driveways. You can have all of these things put in, put in place ahead of time to make yourself less of an easy target and have those predators that may come move on to easier prey. Don't advertise to anyone. Uh, everyone's on a need to know basis. So don't advertise to anyone that you've got these things um, taken care of ahead of time. Don't have a Glock sticker on the back of your car. Don't let people know that you've got these things on hand. Keep that stuff as discreet as possible. So you may be stuck. You may be in an urban, suburban, uh, thickly, densely populated area, and there's not much that you can do about that right now. Um, having an alternate location to go to um, is a great idea, and you should definitely have that. I don't want to call it a bug out location, but, but let's say you had some alternate place to go. Make sure that your vehicle is ready for that. Uh, make sure you have the stuff that you need easily accessible and ready to go at a moment's notice. Make sure your tires aren't completely bald. Make sure you're not completely out of gas. It, a quarter tank is empty. You need to fill that puppy up. Um, and don't be in a situation where you have to run to the gas station when everybody else is. Because um, it's just probably not going to be possible. Have some five gallon gas cans sitting around ready to go. Keep that stuff cycled out so it doesn't get old. Just thinking about this stuff ahead of time. Just think, always thinking, what if the next scenario, what could happen and how can I be more prepared for it? Thanks so much for watching guys. Make sure you hit that thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already and make sure you leave us a comment. Today's comment is going to be, what kind of tree is this that I'm standing under right now?